Hi, in this presentation, I will go deeper into the topic of linear models by introducing regularized linear models and try to answer the question on how to uh, avoid overfitting with linear models. But first, uh, let's ask the questions, do linear, model, do linear models overfit? Uh, we've ex we explained previously that linear models are a simpler uh, machine learning baseline than the typical alternatives, such as decision trees or kernel machines, which are non-linear and therefore more complex. So we could expect the linear models to be uh, less overfitting than the alternatives. And uh, even uh, they could underfit uh, often, especially in cases where the number of features, the number of input variables uh, is small compared to the number of training data points. Uh, in particular, if you have less than 10 features or in, in the order of 10 features and possibly thousands of uh, training points or more, uh, then it's very often the case that the resulting classification problem or linear regression problem you're dealing with is a non-linearly separable data set and therefore the, the linear model will underfit. However, uh, linear models can also overfit. And as we explained previously, if you deal with linear, uh, non-linearly separable data set, you typically want to increase the number of features by doing feature engineering. And, or maybe even naturally, the number of features that you record is naturally very large, for instance, in genomics. Uh, and uh, in this case, it can be even larger than the number of uh, training points. And in this regime, you will uh, often observe that the linear model can overfit significantly and sometimes catastrophically. Um, it's especially the case if you include features uh, that are not necessarily, necessarily uh, informative to predict the target variable. Uh, it's very often the case that we have no good understanding on which feature is uh, useful or not. And so you might want to include all of them just to be, uh, uh, to, to be sure to be able to predict anything. But if you do this, uh, then you might run into overfitting. Okay. So for instance, if we take a, a, the same example as previously, we, are, we were trying to predict the sale price from the uh, gross living area, the year built and the number of bathrooms in the house. But if you include additional features that are uh, very weird, such as the, uh, the birth uh, month of the first owner of the house, it's very unlikely to be very informative uh, about the sale price. But a linear model, if you include that feature and all of many other features, and you fit this on a small uh, training set, uh, the, the linear model may still find correlations, spurious correlations with the sale price and will still assign a non-zero weight here and sometimes large weights to those uh, spurious uh, features. And so the result of this will be uh, overfitting. So how to deal with this situation where we don't know ahead of time which features are interesting? Either you can try uh, an automated feature selection strategy, which will try to do some uh, statistical analysis of the features to uh, weed out the ones that are uh, not likely to, to be very predictive and therefore reduce overfitting by reducing the number of features. Um, so you can have a look at the scikit-learn documentation for feature selection methods if you're interested. Uh, but it's a very wide topic and today I just want to focus on the alternative which is to use what we call regularization. Um, so what is regularization and how can it reduce overfitting? So previously we've introduced for the problem of uh, predicting the sale price, uh, we've introduced the class linear regression. So it's the simplest linear model for regression that you can think of where we reduce the, the squared errors on the training set. Uh, however, if you do so, you have the problem of overfitting if you have many features. So the alternative is to use what we call uh, ridge regression, or at least it's one alternative. Uh, it's the, the 
I would say, the, the most popular alternative to introduce a regularization for linear regression. So uh, in scikit-learn, it's called Ridge. Uh, so it's the, the class name is Ridge, but it's really uh, the Ridge regression uh, method. So the difference when you instantiate this is that you have to pass a parameter alpha. So there is a default value, but you can uh, tune it, and you should probably tune it. Okay, and this alpha parameter will control uh, the, the the strengths of the regularization. And so, what ridge regression does is that it tries to pull to pull the coefficients towards zero. So, if a coefficient uh, for a given feature is such that uh, a large value of that coefficient might reduce the training error on the training set by a large quantity, then ridge will allow it to stay large. But if it's not reducing the training error significantly enough, then it will pull it towards zero more than the other features. Okay, And the, the, the strength of that effect uh, is controlled by alpha. Okay, And there is no good default value of alpha. You have to find uh, which value of alpha is good for a given uh, regression problem. So a recommendation is to always use rich uh, regression uh, instead of linear regression. We introduced linear regression because it's uh, uh, the easy method, but in practice you should always use rich regression and tune the value of alpha for a given problem. And if you set alpha to zero, then you recover uh, the behavior of uh, linear regression, traditional linear regression. Okay, so let's take an example in 1D. So here, here again, we try to predict y given x. x is the input variable, and y, for instance, the target variable, the sale price or something. So here we consider a very small training set. We just have five uh, uh, training points in blue. Okay, and so if we fit linear regression without regularization, or equivalently, if we fit ridge regression with alpha equals zero, then you get these straight lines. Okay, so this is the best fit for this training set. However, because the training set is small, it might be uh, selected at random from uh, many more possibilities. And if the problem has some noise, the specific training set uh, that you have uh, picked up might not be very representative of the general uh, shape of the, the generative process. Okay. So if your dataset is small and noisy, uh, then because you sample the training point at randoms among all the possible uh, training points that you could collect, uh, then the result will be an overfitting scenario. Here you see, you see the straight line here is very sensitive to the specific choice of the blue data points. And you can really see from the general shape of the gray data points that if you had picked up uh, uh, data points uh, more in the uh, general trend, uh, you would have found a different slope. So the coefficient of the linear model would have been different. Okay, So we can actually run this experiment by, uh, instead of uh, picking those five uh, data points, pick an alternative five data points, another training set, and in this case from the same problem, the same uh, uh, set of all possible gray points, it's just uh, another random uh, sample, sample for the training set. And you see that if we had access to the orange data point instead of the blue data point, you, we would have found a very different solution. And you can repeat that many times, and you see that the slope uh, found by all the linear regression models fitted on those alternative training set from the same problem, they will be, uh, they would vary significantly. They be, will be very sensitive to the specific se selection of the training points. And, and to assess this uh, variability, you can use cross-validation, which is basically doing a similar thing. So it's just a resampling the training set and fitting uh, independent models so that you can compare the predictions, Okay, compare the, the, the slopes, the, the, the prediction lines. Okay. So if instead of using unregularized uh, linear regression, we use rich regression on the same problem, uh, then we can hope to reduce this variability. So here again, I recall the, the solution, the behavior we observe with linear regression without regularization. So we have 
we say that we have a high variance problem because the slope here is very sensitive to the, the specific choice of the, of the training set. And there is no bias because the model is free to do to find the best fit for a given a training set. If we want to avoid this problem of high variance, then we can introduce regularization, uh, for instance, using ridge regression. And so if you do this with a specific value of alpha, you will see that the line will be constrained to be uh, uh, of a lower slope. So the, the, the slope coefficient will, will be lower. So it cannot go up uh, as, as before, as, as dramatically as before. So we put some bias or some constraint in the fitting procedure. And this is restraining the model from moving too much, basically. Uh, so we can do that many times for all the, the training sets. So here again, this is for ridge regression with uh, alpha equals zero or linear regression. So no regularization. We again have observed the variance. If we increase alpha progressively, you see that all the slopes for the different training sets uh, start to group together to be much more similar and to be better on average. So we find a good trade-off. But if we increase alpha too large, too much, uh, then we introduce too much bias. And basically, all the slopes are very close to zero. Okay, All the coefficients here uh, are very close to zero. The intercept is still uh, significantly different because we generally do not penalize the intercept. But the coefficients for the slope are very close to zero. And therefore, we introduce underfitting because then the models are no longer be able to uh, are no longer able to uh, capture the trend of the data set. Okay, they ignore the data uh, and they underfit. Okay, so we have to find a trade-off between alpha too small and get the linear regression problem, or alpha too large and just get uh, a, pre uh, a constant prediction uh, that doesn't depend on x anymore. Okay. And so how to find this trade-off? Uh, the traditional solution would be to use what we, the tool that we've seen previously, which is called Grid Search, Grid Search CV for cross validation, where we define a range of all the possible alpha values that we want to consider. For instance, so alpha should always be um, a positive quantity, so uh, strictly positive quantity. If it's equals to zero, then it's just linear regression. Uh, non-regularized linear regression. And it can be very large, but then you typically get uh, uh, the constant predictor if it's too large. And so you can define a grid of possible values for alpha and uh, pass this grid to the grid search CV object where you pass both uh, pass the, uh, the ridge object and the parameter grid, you feed on the data, and internally it will run cross-validation and select the best value of alpha and you can recover this value by accessing this attribute. Uh, however, there is an alternative that is much faster for uh, ridge uh, CV, uh, for ridge regression, which is called ridge CV, for ridge cross-validation. And basically it runs some kinds of internal cross-validation very efficiently uh, because of the, um, the simple structure of, of the statistical problem. There is a much more efficient way to, to compute this. And so you can just import this class instead of importing rich CV, fit uh, or instead of a uh, rich uh, regression, uh, and then you just call fit, and then once it's fit, you can access to the best value of alpha that it discovered among the possible choices that you passed as the constructor parameter. Okay, so. Very, it's very often the case that this is almost the same cost as fitting one value, uh, one ridge for one given value of alpha. Uh, but it will automatically find the best value of alpha uh, for, for the range that you pass. Okay, so it's it can be hundreds of times faster than grid search TV on on many alphas. Okay. Um, so this was for uh, predicting continuous values, so regression problems. But we can also introduce regularization for classification problems for linear models for classification problems. And so the traditional linear model flock classification is called logistic regression, as we introduced previously. And uh, in scikit-learn, uh, it was decided to uh, use regularization by default for logistic regression. So 
uh, it's just the way it is in scikit-learn. And if you want to control regularization, you can control the C parameter. Okay, so by default C equal one. So C is a bit related to alpha, but it's the, a bit of the opposite of alpha, meaning that if C is a large value, like C equals to, to 1000, for instance, then you will get a weaker regularization than the default value of C equal one. So if you want to increase the regularization, you have to decrease the value of C. So for instance, uh, 0.01 will be a strongly regularized logistic regression model. Okay. And the, uh, the effects of regularization on logistic regression um, uh, is twofold. Uh, there is one first effect, which is if you have a small C value, so a strong regularization, uh, the region of the feature space where the model will not be too confident, where you will have predicted probabilities of class membership being close to 0.5, will be larger. So you see, for the, the two groups of points in the middle, uh, the probability is between those two lines. So it means that the probabilities will be between, uh, for instance, uh, uh, 0 0.2 and 0 0.8, something like this, okay? Uh, so for all those data points, the model will not be very confident. Whereas here, for large C, so uh, smaller regularization, you see that the regions where the model is not too confident is much smaller. So it's just the, the section of the space between the groups, okay? And in particular, for, for those points here, you observe that now it's very confident that they are orange, whereas here, uh, it wasn't confident at all. It was very close to 0 0.5, okay? And the second effect is that the even the, the position and the orientation of the separation between the two groups can change. Here you see it's slightly tilted to the right, and here it's significantly tilted to the left. Uh, so meaning that here the, the data points of the training set that influence the, the orientation of the separating line are those points close to the decision boundary. Whereas here, many more points are impacting the, the, the orientation of the straight line. Uh, so there is also an effect on uh, how, how much points contribute to the position of the straight line. And this, it makes sense here we, when we have a, a small regularization, you see that uh, small variations of a few data points close to the decision boundary can have a large effect on the orientation. Whereas here, when we have a strong regularization, you see that to, to make it move, you have to, uh, to, to consider many more data points at, at the same time. Okay, so some take home messages for uh, regularization and linear models. So linear models, despite the fact that they are simple models, they can overfit when the number of training points is small, especially compared to the number of features. So if the number of features is large, you can make the linear model overfit. And in particular, it is the case if you introduce features that are not necessarily uh, informative, so not necessarily predictive of the Y uh, target variable. They can be just correlated on to the target variable by chance on the small uh, set of training points that you observe. And the model will, uh, by default, if you do not regularize it, will assign large uh, coefficients to those uh, noisy features. And as a result, you observe overfitting. So to avoid this, we will pull the coefficients towards zero. Uh, so to do so, uh, if you do this for linear regression, this is what we call ridge regression. And uh, in this case, uh, a large alpha parameter will mean a stronger regularization. So this is for predicting a continuous variable such as a temperature or a price or something like this. If you want to predict a class value, the probability of a class assignment, so for a classification problem, then you can do this for a logistic regression, uh, which is in scikit-learn regularized by default. It's not necessarily the case in other libraries, uh, but in scikit-learn it is the case. And so you have to tweak the parameter uh, named C 
to change the re regularization and just keep in mind that the small value of c means a strong regularization so it's the opposite of alpha so thank you very much for your attention